we have this very vertical front end right here, as you can see. We also see that in the brand new Kia Sedona. Since the model we're taking a look at here is the top end model, we have HID headlamps over here, and we also have fog lamps right down here below them. Right here below the Kia logo on the front of the Sorento, you will see a camera. That's because we have an available all around camera system that's very similar to what you see in Infinity models, but that's only available on the top end trims. Kia refers to this grill design as the Tiger Nose Grill. It actually has sort of a 3D effect to it. All these little dots here actually protrude about three quarters of an inch from the rest of the grill front end, and we have this little Tiger Nose cut in right there. The Sorento has gained about three inches over the 2015 model, but we've actually gained a little bit more interior space than that because it's a little bit boxier on the outside. You'll notice very specifically out back we have a much narrower bumper than the 2015 model. This places the overall length between entries like the Nissan Rogue and the Toyota Highlander. The Nissan Rogue also has a seven passenger option, but it is a few inches shorter than this. This happens to slot right between the Santa Fe and the Santa Fe Sport in terms of overall dimensions. In addition to the overall dimensions increasing, the wheelbase has also increased by about three inches for the 2016 model year, giving you a little bit more room, especially back here in the second row. Out back, it's obvious that the profile is very upright, very traditional SUV. We have these new and much more expressive tail lamps right back here as well. We have very well integrated parking sensors and a metal scuff plate right down here to help keep your bumper from getting scuffed. Same thing right up here below the tailgate lip. We have a single exhaust tip right over here on this side, even though we are in the V6 model. One thing to note is that this bumper cover doesn't stick out too far from the hatchback. It's only about an inch different or so between this bumper cover right here and the back of this hatch. Under the hood, a few things are the same, and a few things are a little bit different for the 2016 model year. We have the same basic 2.4 liter and 3.3 liter engine lineup. The 2.4 liter engine has been lightly revised for the 2016 model year, and now produces 185 horsepower and 178 pound-feet of torque. The 3.3 liter engine produces the same 290 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque as before, but now there is a third engine option in the Sorento. It's a 2 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder engine. It produces 240 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. If you want to add all-wheel drive, it is available with all three engines on all trim levels of the Sorento, and it'll add about $1,800. All three engines are mated to the same six-speed automatic transmission. Front seat comfort comes in at 10 out of 10 points for this mass market segment. We have a multi-way adjustable driver's seat with a power-extending thigh cushion, which is a very rare option in this segment. Normally, you don't find that until you step up to luxury crossovers. We also have a four-way adjustable lumbar support, which is another nice touch. We have a tilt telescopic steering column with a moderate range of motion. As we've come to expect from Kia, keeping costs low, the passenger seat does not have the same range of motion as the driver, so we don't have this extending thigh cushion, and we don't have the adjustable lumbar support. When it comes to rear seat accommodations, I'll give this 9 out of 10 points in our particular model. We do have the upgraded leather upholstery, which makes these rear seats a little bit softer. These rear seats also recline. They have a decent recline range to them. Um, they also have a recline mechanism that doesn't hit you strangely in the back. It actually is fairly low in the seat back and the rear seats do move forward and backward. The recline mechanism in the seat allows you to make the seat very, very upright, giving you a more square cargo area, but obviously a great deal less comfortable for a passenger back here. I still have about three or four inches of legroom right here, sitting behind myself with this front seat adjusted for me. I also have about three inches of headroom, even though we're in the panoramic sunroof equipped model. Because of the drivetrain design in our all-wheel drive model, there is no hump in the middle, so getting a middle passenger in here is fairly easy. This middle seat is not quite as comfortable as some because of the shape of these outboard bucket seats, but I still have an adequate amount of headroom. Scooting all the way over to the right side, I still have about two inches of legroom, even though this front seat is all the way back in its tracks. Getting in and out of the third row is fairly easy. We have a handle right here on this seat back. Pull it forward, seat slides forward and tilts forward as well. You can also pull on it to get it adjusted right back into position. Even though the Sorento is smaller than most of those other three row crossovers, we have a decent amount of leg room behind this second row seat. This seat actually is all the way back in its tracks as well, and I have about an inch of leg room left back here. That's because the seat bottom cushion is very close to the floor. Passengers in the third row can control their own temperature with this fan knob right back here. Just blows air set to whatever it is set to up front. Legroom is not really the issue in the Sorento's third row, it's headroom, and that's why I'm going to have to give this 6 out of 10 points when it comes to my third row score, because I do have to cock my head to one side in order to sit upright in this third row. Now, if I slouch, which I could do comfortably, I can rest my head on the headrest, I could probably do this for 30, 40 minutes, etc. Let's start off our interior tour with a brief overview of the dashboard. This is a completely redesigned dashboard for this generation of the Sorento. We also have an awful lot more soft touch plastics inside 
than we found in previous generations. Those soft touch plastics are most notable here on the rear doors where we have soft touch upper plastics and a more thickly padded armrest. We also have this available sunshade integrated into the rear door. The two front seats get height adjustable seat belts right over there and we have this four way adjustable headrest which reminds me a great deal of Saab headrests. It moves in and out as well as up and down. You use this button right there on the side to adjust it. Moving on over to the front doors, we again have more soft touch plastics than we had in previous generations. In fact, the only hard touch plastic you'll find is right down here next to the bottle holders in the bottom portion of the door. Moving on over to the dashboard, this piano black trim continues all the way across the top of that dashboard. We also have stitching right here on this injection molded dashboard. What this is, is it's a regular old injection molded dashboard and then they go on it with a sewing machine and they stitch stitches into the dashboard. So the stitches actually aren't holding anything together. Soft touch plastics right down here and on the center of the tunnel right there hard touch plastics for this fairly large glove box. Our model is equipped with this eight inch touchscreen UVO infotainment and navigation system. We have direct access buttons right over here on the side and on this side over here as well. File tune button and a power volume knob right over there. Again, keeping in mind that we're in an upper level trim, we have keyless go right over here, dual zone climate control and heated seats in our model. Working our way down, we have two very large cup holders over here, a very traditional shifter. If I go ahead and start the engine, you'll notice drive is all the way down there. Manual mode is over to the left, up for up, down for down drive mode button right there. We also have a lock button. This does not use a true center differential, but it does use a multi-plate transfer clutch. You can lock that by pressing that button right there. And then we have a parking sensor enable disable button. Upper level trims get a slightly different button bank. We have the drive mode button right here, lock button right here, auto hold for the brake system and an electronic parking brake. Moving on out to the steering wheel, we have a softly padded leather three spoke steering wheel with a hard plastic airbag cover right over there in the center. Dedicated phone hang up and pickup buttons, volume knob over here, track forward, backward mode and voice command button. Over on this side, we have that same button arrangement and dial that I showed you earlier. And we have our cruise control right over here, enable, disable, cancel, and then resume and set. To the driver's left, we have our dimmer button, blind spot warning system button, inverter enable disable button, that plug is in the back seat. And then we have our traction control disable button right over there, power tailgate and fuel door release. This is a very large panoramic opening. You can see it goes all the way back there to just behind the second row seats. A consequence of the Sorento's smaller exterior dimensions versus some of the larger three row crossovers is more limited cargo room right back here behind the third row. In terms of practicality, that means my cargo carrying capacity behind the third row is really limited to just two 24 inch roller bags. As you can see, I can just barely squeeze this one right over here on this half. This other seat is folded down. Now on the flip side, that means that if you do fold that seat down right there, we actually have far more cargo room in this vehicle than you do in your average two row crossover. So some aiding a little bit in practicality, we have this underfloor storage compartment right there where we can drop a bag in right like that. And of course, if you do opt to not get the third row seat, then you will get some under cargo floor storage area where the third row seat would normally go. I'm gonna give this cargo area nine out of 10 points in my exclusive trunk comfort index. Things are furnished very nicely back here. We also have climate controls for the third row passengers, which is kind of a nice touch. Even larger through row crossovers sometimes omit that. We also have this power tailgate hatch in our particular model, which is a very nice touch. The Highlander's third row is of course a little bit more comfortable because we have more room back there. We also have about twice the amount of storage behind the third row than we get in the Kia Sorento, even though the Highlander has kind of a compact cargo area. The Sorento has very similar fuel economy and very similar handling behaviors to the Toyota Highlander, but we have a little bit more standard equipment in this vehicle than we do in a similarly priced Highlander. It's about two to $3,000 more standard equipment in the Kia than in the Toyota.